Our Computex 2023 coverage is made possible by Thermaltake, Mian Lee, G-Skill, CableMod, Team Group, Asus, XPG, and Seasonic. What's up guys, I'm Stuart from GGF and we are here at the Lian Lee 2023 Computex booth. Now if you checked out the live stream earlier, I did cover all this, uh, all the cases, all the fans, and the new all-in-one coolers from Lian Lee, but we're going to take a little bit of a closer look. I'll get some nice B-roll of these cases, I'll get some nice B-roll of the fans. Their fans have little LCD screens on them, which is, which is nuts. They also have a new desk coming out. So we'll start with these cases here. So this one here is the new O11D Vision, and this is in collaboration with uh, PCMR, PC Master Race. They did the original O11 PCMR, which was the full two-way mirror edition. This one's slightly different. They've ditched the two-way mirror, and now they've gone with a three-sided tempered glass. It might be hard from the top. I'll throw some B-roll over so you can see. So there's actually full glass at the top, the side, and the front. Now, obviously, you're not going to be putting fans at the top because it's glass. So this isn't an airflow oriented case. Lanley do lots of cases for a lot of uh, different people and, their, and the audience they're going for. So obviously this one is for looks. You can see all your hardware. Now obviously this one, you're not gonna be putting this one up really, really high on a desk, because you're not gonna see the top. So on a normal desk height, this, well even this desk is quite high. On a normal desk, you're really going to see everything on this or inside this case. And now one little thing I wanna to touch on is how they've implemented this design to support this corner. Because obviously you can't join uh, three bits of glass without having some structural integrity in this corner. So this is a magnet, it's fixed onto one of these pieces and then the top and the side clip in. Now what Lian Lee suggests, they suggest not removing this front panel. There's probably no reason to. I know on a lot of previous L11 cases, you can take this off and this one off. But this is more structurally fixed, it can come off, but it takes a little bit more work. So this one here is designed to stay on and then you take these two off and it does have that little bit in the corner. It'd be really sweet to see if a case company can do this uh, try design with the glass and not have any structural corner in here. I don't know how they'll do it. they probably need to have some slotted uh, groove in the glass to try and do that. Now some other things about the case, the motherboard tray is uh, removable and it does drop down into some different levels like the original O11 Mini. Now, that one you could drop it down if you want with an MHX motherboard to allow room at the top for say a radiator and that. Now that's a little bit different here because you're not going to be putting a radiator or fans at the top because it's all glass. So I'm not sure why you would want to drop that down. I know you could drop it up higher to put your radiator at the bottom. So main intake and outtake uh, for this case would definitely be in at the bottom and then probably out the rear side and then out the back here because there is no uh, top. And one reason why you can drop this uh, motherboard tray down is you can fit, if you drop it down in the lowest, you can fit a 240 radiator, or here they have two 120 millimeter fans as well. And then of course we have a nice dust filter that slides out the bottom, and it's not just one of those ones that just sticks on and always fall, falls out the bottom. I'm trying to open this, but the magnetic, that's quite strong, there we go, that just slides out. And it is nice and seamless, and it just looks like it's part of the case with that one line, and I think I nearly broke it, no, that's all good. That one line that runs along the bottom. Now, if we have a look at this one over here, this one's empty. If I can spin this around. Now, this is the same chassis, it's just empty. They have bumped out the back of the PSU cage. Now, this is just to give you a little bit more room if you're fitting in a larger PSU in the rear. Now, that has been a, an issue with some of these cases in the past. We're running a very long PSU. So if you're running something like a 1200 or maybe a 1600 for some reason, you've now got room there to uh, bump that PSU out just a little bit more to give you that extra room because you don't want your PSU coming all the way up to the end because you have no room for cable management. Then we have this new slide out door. I do like this, it's very strong and it clips in there. It might be a bit of an issue if you have so many cables and you can't get this to lock in, but overall it does close nicely. And then once again, you have the removable uh, radiator bracket on the side and then support for two, um, for the two hard drives in there. So that's basically it for this case. I'll probably put uh, all the ETAs, the release dates and the price for all of these just in the, the uh, YouTube description, just so you guys know, because I did go through them all earlier in the live stream, but to remember all of these, all I can say is a lot of these cases are coming October and September, so that is not very far away. So that's, um, so that's really good to see. So a lot of these cases are pretty much final and they will be out shortly. Now let's take a look at, uh, we might start off with this one over here that is moving. It's going to be very hard to get a shot on this. I wonder if I can turn, no, I can't turn that off. I'll probably get electrocuted. Um, so this one here, this one is the O11 uh, RGB. So it's the Evo RGB. And the main difference is the RGB lines along the top and then at the bottom. 
We'll just wait for this to spin around. I will throw some B-roll over the top. And then once again, you can see here, it does have that bumped out PSU uh, shroud bit to give you that extra room on the inside. And I really do like how they've done these lines at the top. They're very clean. It's not really thick RGB. It's very, very strong and it looks really good. It might look white in this video, because it is very, very bright here and it is hard to see. So what we'll do is we'll come around and look at one of these cases that's empty so we can see a little bit more inside. Same one we just saw, but this one's, uh, it's got an empty case, but they do have the lights going again. I'll just take these side panels off. They do clip on and off very nicely. And now what they've done is they put a chamfer on the glass all the way down. So it's like a 45 on this one and a 45 on this one. And that just makes it a, a better a better clean, a better finish. Whenever, if someone's in, into woodworking, whenever you're doing woodworking and joining two corners together, putting that, that 45 degree on it just makes that more premium feel. And it just looks nicer than having one bit of edge glass sticking this way and then one bit of edge glass sticking this way. Now internals for this case is very similar to the original O11 Evo. There are some design changes. So this, this is good. Lianli just haven't grabbed an O11 Evo and they just haven't thrown in some IGB strips and said, hey, here we go. They've listened to the community, they've listened to models, they've listened to reviewers, and they've taken your feedback and they've done some changes. So this has some of the design features as the Landcool 3. The I.O. cover is uh, adjustable in the back here, so you can move that up and down for different motherboards if you find it's a little bit tight and it doesn't fit too well. And then around the back, we take a look. Also, they've also kept the three spots for the front I.O. You can put it at the front, the side, and then also at the back at the rear, depending on if your case is on the left side or the right side. And all these panels clip in and out. Very nice, just straight off like that. And then around the back, this is a new uh, design implementation. It's just a little plastic little clip you go this way and this just pops out so the original O11 had the screw at the top it slotted in and it had the screw at the bottom and then you can see very similar to the original O11 Evo you have your cable management here your two hard drives here these are removable and then your PSU here obviously it fits standard ATX they just gone with a small unit here uh, for this build and then once again we have the side uh, the side 360 spot there and you can put your radiator and so on uh, let's move to probably what you guys have all been waiting for. See, when I came to Combitex, I only thought Lian Li were bringing out the O11 Evo XL. I didn't even know they had these other cases. And there's also another case as well, apart from these that we'll talk about. So this one here is the big boy O11D Evo XL. Now this has been built from the ground up. It's completely different to the original Evo. It's bigger. As you look here, we have the two sizes here. So original Evo, and then I would say this is probably an inch and a half, uh, inch and a half larger for the XL. Of course, it's going to be bigger. It's called the XL. They don't call it that for no reason. Down the bottom, you can still move the front I.O. to the side and the back, but that has been beefed up a bit. We now have four USB Type A, and then we have the USB Type C. The specs of these, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure they'll be the latest speeds, probably 20 for the um, Type C, and then the USB will be the latest, and then a combo port for your microphone and headset. Taken off the side panel. These ones clip in and out, but they also have screws, which is good because I do like it when you can also always fix your side panels down. Because if you are, are transporting them, you don't want the side panel to fall off while transporting it. Now, as I said, this has been redesigned from the ground up, slightly different inside. The motherboard tray is removable and it can go up and down as well to provide for more room. But I'm looking at this case now and I can see about 100 millimeters of clearance at the top. I can see 100 millimeters of clearance on the bottom. So we got some beefy rad support. Now, being in the XL, they've also bumped these up to 420 radiator support. So we can do 420 top, 420 bottom, and 420 on the sides. So that's pretty sweet. Let's have a look at the rear. It's gonna be hard to see. I might just get one of my colleagues to move, to move this one out of the way so we can get this all the way around. All right, so taking a look about the, uh, looking at the back, we have a heap going on here. The layout here is quite interesting. PSU, I've been told, is fixed in the middle. So like the original O11 non-Evo XL, which was out a few years ago, PSU could go bottom, middle, or top. You could put in three PSUs if you wanted to. This one's fixed in here because now there's two hot swap dry bays uh, top and bottom, so two in here, two in here, and these have built-in hot swap capabilities. So uh, you can just drop a drive in, drop a drive in, and I do like how these swing out. So if these were fixed in here and you wanted to hot swap your drive, they used to go out the back, or it'd be too hard to pull a drive out this way. So now we can just swing it out here, and I really like how there's magnetic clips on the side here. So when you pop it out, these drive bays stay out. They don't sort of fold back in, and they're not uh, wobbly. So that's a nice feature, but these can be removed as well if you do want extra room 
for uh, cables and so on. Once again, we have the standard Evo cable ma uh, management with these clips in here. This clip has come off. Uh, these are prototypes, so there will be a few little issues here and there. And then we also have more storage support on the back there. And then on this cover, once again, we have the magnetic clip here. So we can do one, two, three SSDs in there, which is nice to see. And you can put these probably on the inside. And then one thing I really want to take a look at, I'll see if I can do this. The vertical GPU mount for this side area here it was a bit finicky. You had to install the, install the bracket onto the GPU, try and slide it in the top, uh, run your cables down, and it was a little bit of a mess. So Lianli has taken that feedback on board and they've come out with a whole different design, whereas this time it just pushes out and the whole actual GPU just mounts onto the bracket. And you can see that there. So you can mount this outside of your system get it all going, run the cable in out the top and just drop it in, which is really nice. And if you want to have this with your ports facing up, you can install it this way. If you want it with your ports facing down, you just simply spin this bracket around. Uh, the only way before, if you wanted your GPU with the ports down, you had to invert the whole case. You couldn't just do it so you could spin this bracket around. So they've listened to you guys and they've added that feature so you can have your GPU going each way. So that is nice. And Talking about inverting the case, you can still invert the uh, Evo XL just like how you could invert the original. Just like how you can invert the original uh, Evo, you could have the other uh, your GPU on this side and you can have your motherboard upside down. I'm not sure how many people do that. I did a build with that and it looks pretty cool. But yeah, main features of this bigger radiator support, 3420s all around, and I can just see the the area for your GPU and the radiator area is much bigger here. And you have to remember when the original O11 Evo came out, the 40 series weren't even out then. So now we have these monstrous GPUs. So making the, EV, uh, uh, the Evo XL just really makes sense to make this whole area much, much bigger. And of course, all these cases are coming out in white, like Lanley always does. And we have the white one over here, just to give you an idea uh, on what that looks like. So we're gonna jump in now and have a look at one more case they have, then we'll check out their fans. Now this case here is quite interesting. This is the SUP1, so this is a stand-up platform. The GPU is in interesting. It goes at the very, very front, and there's actually no spot for the GPU in the traditional layout. As you can see, this case is very, very narrow. I'll take this side panel off so we just don't get reflections. So if you have a really nice GPU and you want to show it off, this is definitely the case to go for. As you can see on the main motherboard side, there's not much room there. Uh, air cooling, uh, coolers are going to struggle in this case. Uh, Lianli are really aiming this for all-in-one coolers only. I will sort of bear in mind that there's not much room even for an all-in-one cooler. So I'll get Lianli to definitely uh, list all the compatibility, uh, the different uh, clearances and so on, because even their own cooler is very, very tight. Something like Asus might struggle to fit in this one. Then it comes up with their vertical GPU riser and then, then runs along and then runs at the front. Some interesting things in this chassis. They've impl implemented some mirror designs. The bottom has a mirror. I'll get some shots of B-roll and throw this. And then the top has a two-way mirror. It's not a two-way mirror shooting down. It's a two-way mirror shooting from the bottom. Um, they're just playing around with this. I want to see how it looks. So when you're looking at your desk inside your case, you'll see your components from the inside of the top. There's probably no point putting it on the top because then it's going to be reflecting the walls in your house. So putting it on the inside does make sense. Now, moving around to the back side, which we'll use this one here, uh, support for this case, they say, is up to uh, ATX. I reckon you could squeeze EATX, but for playing it safe, they'll probably list ATX just to just to make sure that uh, a bunch of you guys aren't putting in some extreme motherboards and then find out the uh, cable holes don't line up. But I can see that an EATX board would fit, but it might just not fully fit for cable routing. Now, interesting way they've designed this, and they've done a lot of testing behind this. So it'll be interesting to see if someone like Steve uh, does his airflow test. So basically what they're saying, so this is the backside of the same case. GPU goes in here, so you go in your GPU, then you go, you're out this way, and then you go in this way. So you have three fans here going in, and then you have three fans going out. So that's gonna be completely up to the user. You could do all fans in, all fans out. You're gonna get, uh, play around with different pressure. Obviously there's all holes here. So you'll be sucking in air. If you have all these out, you can be sucking air from in this backside. But they've done testing, so it'll be interesting to see how this all goes with the, um, with the different configs. I'll see if I can spin this one around because this one has the, has the layout of the fans already in. So yeah, the first bank of fans are blowing uh, out and then the first row at the back are the intake ones. So that's just an interesting design and there's no other intake or uh, exhaust for the uh, system on the main side. Uh, some other things about this, the one that was off was a little bit hard to see, but it does have, um, 
slide this. It does have an RGB strip that runs along the whole front, which is quite nice. It may look white on um, on film because it is a very light blue teal, and that runs along here and then all the way along the edge. Something nice and subtle, nothing too much there. And then the front, which I really do like, the power button and reset button. As you can see, the Lian is the power, and then the Li for Lian Li is the reset. Uh, so that's a nice touch. And then volume-wise, they said it's uh, sub 45 liters, so it's something like 44 point something liters. So it's definitely smaller than a uh, than a Land Cool 3, but it just gives you uh, different layouts, and it's really just as been designed for all-in-one coolers only. I'm just thinking about ways how I can do like a custom loop. In this case, I've got support for radiators at the back. This will look really nice with a block. The only issue is with this is if you're putting a block there, it only comes with the mesh front. I'd have to fabricate uh, a clear panel to see your block through that, which is something that can always be done. Now moving over to some fans. The Anli has some really sick fans coming out and I had no idea uh, how they even came up with these. I'll throw some shots of B-roll so we can get a real good look at these. So these are like their Infinity V2 and these are the uh, TL uh, LCD. So each center of the fan hub has a LCD on it. Now at the moment that has Pac-Man. Uh, when I throw some B-roll, uh, we did turn the monitor off that's controlling this, but you can throw uh, temperatures on it, you can throw all different stats on it, and the resolution looks really good. Obviously this resolution on Pac-Man doesn't look the best, because that's just how Pac-Man looks. But I'll throw some other shots on there, and we can see how that really looks. You just have to bear in mind, uh, you can only run six of these LCD fans off one controller. So if you want to run more, you do need another controller, because they are quite power hungry. They have their non-LCD version over here, and you can run something like... Uh, 12 or something off a controller and then you can daisy chain so just to give you a bit of a uh, rundown on how these are all set up this whole box this clear acrylic case they've made up is powered off one controller and one cable going out that's running oops i actually just broke that okay we are back Okay, so I won't touch that again. But as you can see, this is all being run off one controller. So you can daisy chain up to, I think it was 12 of the non-LCD and up to three of the um, three of the LCD ones. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we have three of that. So that is a lot of fans. So they're all daisy chained and then you can run that to one hub. Now, another thing that's really cool with these fans, although they're not spinning now, previous uni fans, when you had, a, say, a bank of three together, you wanted to change the RPM, you want to set them to manual, high speed, low speed. You could only adjust the whole bank at one time. So three fans could run at say 1500 RPM, 2000 RPM, that was it. Now you can control individual fans. So I don't know how important that would be to the end user, having one fan at like, um, one fan at 1500, one fan at 2000. But the good thing I can see is if you have all these daisy chained in one bank, you can have, you can have 1500 for the intake, and you can have, say, 2,000 for the exhaust bank. Whereas before, the only way you could do that, you'd have to have each bank connected to a separate port on the controller, and that meant more cables had to run to the controller as well. And these fans also come in uh, standard flow, which are the bottom ones. Uh, these are all standard flow. And then we also have reverse flow as well. So these aren't removable like other brands. You just have to make sure you pick up the uh, directional flow that you want. So your bottoms, you could have intake, and then the top, you'll have the standard flow ones as well. And then we also have the non, uh, the non LCD, which is just a TL, and they have their high performance bearing, uh, like in their new P28 fans. And all these fans are 28 millimeters thick, so you just have to bear in mind with that that they are slightly thicker than your standard uh, 25 millimeter fan. And like the original Infinities, there's going to be a heap of fingerprints on these because everyone's been touching them. The mirror now runs literally all the way along. Obviously, there has to be a join because the fans can be uh, split and joined together into multiple sets, but they've done it really good how it's just one long line. The original Infinities had a bit of a design element where they went along, they stopped, they started again, and stopped, and then they started again. So it sort of broke up that cohesiveness for the design. Now they're just one solid mirror, and it does look really good. And I've been told these fans are going to be somewhere around uh, September, October area, so that's not too far away. So it looks like these fans are pretty much final, and they are ready to go. Alrighty guys, now we're checking out some all-in-one coolers from the Anli. Now these are the Galahad 2 Trinity. So there's a performance, there's an RGB, and then there is an LCD. So we'll start here and we'll work our way down. Obviously, the performance is all about performance. The radiator, the radiator is slightly thicker, it's 32 millimeters. The fans are 28 millimeters, so that makes a perfect 60. Uh, it does kind of make sense. And then the radiator is a 
uh, split fin design, so you have some slightly more performance there. And then the fans are similar to their P28s that they've just launched. They're not exactly the same, but they're slightly different. Now, some pretty cool things with these fans is, once again, I'll throw some B-roll over this. Now, these aren't uni fans. These don't clip together like we just saw. They connect together like the standard way with cables. They can daisy chain, but the cables daisy chain inside down the bottom and then you put these little covers i won't attempt to put this one one back on i will need two hands but they will daisy chain together and then you put the covers back on just like this once you are done so as you can see they look like uni fans but obviously they don't have that technology they're going to be cheaper and they look exactly the same once they're done and they can do that to make it a little bit cheaper and what i've been told for leanne lee that this comes pre-assembled so everything is ready to go the fans come pre-installed all you need to do orientate it in your case and you are good to go another cool feature with this one is the fans connect to the pump block over here and then you don't have to worry about plugging fans in separately to control them on your motherboard so all you need is one out for your pump and then one out for the pump power so just two cables and you are good to go we do have some swivel connectors which i like to see it's hard to spin this around now but these are full 360 uh, the pump block is screwed down so i can't turn this but as you can see these are turning around here and you can spin this right around and that just gives you better flexibility options in tight spaces one cool thing about the performance one is the way the RGB is done on this one. So they have their Infinity uh, mirror design, which they had on the original Galahad, but this one is a dual zone. You can customize the RGB in each zone, and there's two Infinity sections in it. I'll throw some B-roll once again so we can see that. And you can also swap out the, the caps with the frosted caps. So if you're not interested in the mirror and the uh, infinity section, there's a really nice system in here. I won't attempt to get this uh, with this exposure setting, but I'll get some B-roll, uh, put the exposure down, get that nice and clean, and that looks really good. And there are a heap of lights. I think they said something like 50 or something lights on here. It's, it's good to see an all-in-one cooler that's made well and they don't just stick four LEDs around the ring and you have hot spots and cold spots in it all. Like this one over here, if you're looking front on, it looks really nice and it is super bright here and it's not, it's not overexposed, it looks nice, it's nice and dark. Let me see how that actually does look. Yeah, it's not too bad on film. I did put the exposure down to try and get that, but I'll definitely put some, um, some B-roll shots over the top and we can see that looks really nice. And what you can also do, you can run the outer frosted cap that's running there and you can swap that with the infinity mirror cap so what they were saying it kind of looks like a black hole so you have the rgb around the side and then you put the infinity mirror one in the middle and it just just gives you different options and different contrasting settings you can play around with and these all connect into the uh, l connect software moving down to the trinity rgb basically the uh the rgb and the pump block and the connectors are all the same. The only difference is the fans and the radiator. It's a slimmer radiator. It's your standard 27, 28 millimeter thick radiator, and it doesn't have the performance fan. So you have to remember, familiar with the P28, uh, they have no RGB, but they have a clip-on attachment, and you can use those same ones. It's the same concept, and you can put the RGB on the side of these fans. But as I said, this is purely a performance setup with the RGB on the block, whereas the other one over here, the Trinity RGB, uh, it's got RGB on the fans, but it does have that sort of a small stand all-in-one cooling radiator it is uh, skinnier and the performance radiator is slightly wider as well so if you do have a small case you do have to take note and the performance one will come in a 360 only uh, it will be white and black and the Trinity RGB will come in a 240 and a 360 and it does have the same pump block as the one we just looked at in the performance so there's probably no point me going over going over that again and we'll just get some shots of how the dual infinity mirror actually looks and then moving down a little bit further is the Galahad to the LCD unit. Now this one is the same radiator, the same fans, the same tubing, and a similar pump design as the one we just looked at, the Trinity RGB. It's not the same as the performance, it's slightly smaller, but the main design change in this one is they've added an LCD display on it. And we can see it in the system here. It is 480 by 480. It's not super high resolution, but hey, we don't need something in, uh, uh, in 4K that's like an inch and a half by an inch and a half. So that does look really cool. Uh, you can put a lot of um, a lot of features on this. They're still working out different designs. You can do your own uh, do your own animations uh, and just different things like that. And it all connects into the L Connect uh, software. If we can have a look at the screen up here, you can get a different uh, different idea on how it's implemented in. I won't mess around with this now, but I might show some um, screen recordings on how this looks in some photos and how you can uh, change it. There's no sort of creator studio that other brands have yet. This might be something they might design in the future, so you can design something from scratch. But I do like how they also implemented some RGB on the, signs, uh, on the sides of that cooler as well. So you do have that 
uh, there and some other things you can do you can set like temperature control colors on the LCD so the L LCD can be showing something that's uh, something that's blue and green when it's uh, running cool and then when it heats up the image will change colors to red uh, obviously being hotter but uh, release for these all-in-one coolers uh, we're looking at uh, a little bit later on I think we're looking Q4 uh, September. Uh, September for these those are, those are uh, late June Okay, late June, late June, and then September for all of these. So they'll be out soon. And then the price is obviously around two forty nine, two forty nine for the the LCD one, one forty nine for the Trinity RGB, and one sixty nine for the performance one. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. But um, I'll put a lot of things in the description, all the prices, all the release dates as well. They won't be exact dates, they'll just be rough estimates. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We checked out cases, the fans, and all these all-in-one coolers. I do want to thank Leanley for sending me out here to check out all this stuff. I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.